Despite how disconcerting it may sound, there's an art to murder. Today's top 10 is about celebrating the most creative, well-crafted, and often unnecessary acts of crazy-ass brutality in all of video games. Without further ado, let's take a look at the games with the very best kill animations. Dishonored's kills are different from most of the kills you'll be seeing further down this list. They're precise surgical strikes, and they put motherfuckers down quick. This masked mute maniac does not fuck around. These poor lumpy hand having fucks don't even have a chance to register what's happening to them. These kill animations aren't really anything special on the surface, but there's a visceral satisfaction to Corvo's complete lack of hesitation when stabbing motherfuckers in the neck. Always the neck. God. Better bring home the gold and Olympic neck stabs and shit. I'm just gonna sit back and let you marvel at the true extent of Corvo's murderous abilities in a second. Just know that in the right player's hands, any Anything from teleport stabs to using decapitated heads as weapons are viable techniques. I didn't know you could do half that shit in this game, honestly. Alright, let's get this one over with. Mm, coincidentally, I think that's actually the subtitle of the new Assassin's Creed game. Anyway, this series is begging for death. They couldn't get a story right, they couldn't get tree branches right, they certainly couldn't get human faces right. The best thing the series has done in years has helped me fulfill my lifelong fantasy of being Jack the Ripper. The only remaining spark of life in the bloated, desolate whale corpse that is Assassin's Creed are the gloriously unnecessary kill animations. By the time Syndicate came out, Ubisoft had clearly long since said fuck it because this shit is just Def Jam now. These animations are like five minutes long, I toasted a fucking bagel while this was happening. I missed when it was about hiding in piles of whores and sitting on benches. I guess I can't really complain though, I am a fan of braining people with sticks, and that seems to be what it's all about these days. Sadly, it looks like we can only go down the stupid slope from here. We've traced his bloodline back 500 years to the Assassin's Creed. To the Assassin's Creed. Kill animations are great, but Max Payne 3 proves that you shouldn't make a game just because kill animations are great. It's kind of all Max Payne 3 had to offer. With that out of the way, FUCK YEAH! FUCK YEAH! FUCK YOU! This game is essentially designed to pander to a human's most basic instinct of wanting to see someone die horribly. But I guess that's kind of what all Rockstar games are about. Darker than its predecessors and grittier than the sandpaper enema, Max Payne 3 is a classic example of the archetypal mid-2000s walk-shoot-walk-shooter, as I like to call them. By the end of the baptism of blood that this game is, Max Payne easily ranks among video games' baddest of the bald. And you get to commit all this blistering third-degree homicide to one of the best game soundtracks this side of Hotline Miami. It's fucking awesome. Keep in mind that Max Payne is not a masterpiece, but these kills are worth the five bucks it's marked out in the bargain bin right about now. Hope you like scenes of fat, sweaty men taking a bunch of pills, because I counted, and that happened happens not once, not twice, but five times in Max Payne 3. I miss it when games were as dumb as Prototype. Prototype is about a man who can turn his arms into swords, and he's on the hunt for whoever gave him swords for arms because he never asked for this. And to be honest, I don't think I would either, because it doesn't seem like you could have these powers without accidentally genociding half a city every time you sneeze. But as someone who has worked in retail, sometimes coming home and genociding a city is exactly what I need, and the kill animations in Prototype make that violent retribution as satisfying as possible. But I promise, he never asked for this. So many classic kills in there. The alley-oop, the poop-shoot punch, the juice the Wrestlemania, they're all absurdly awesome. And of course, Prototype had a sequel with double the graphics, double the locations, and the exact same kill animations. Great. That second Prototype is a disappointment for the fucking ages, man. The only reason Dead Space isn't higher on the list is because you can't control these animations, but that's also what makes it unique. Another unique checkbox that Dead Space ticks off is Death Via Baby, something that no other game on this list can say it has. Kinda thought Manhunt would get there first, honestly. But unlike Manhunt, the death animations in Dead Space are not a reward, they're a punishment. A harsh, harsh punishment. If you've got chops for chopping, technically you could play through this whole series without experiencing a single one of Isaac Clarke's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. 
They're designed to make your skin crawl as much as possible when they're not hilarious and stupid like this one. And more often than not, that results in some of the most drawn out, uncomfortable alien encounters this side of any Mass Effect sex scene, really pick one. The developers really let you stew while you watch the alien punching bag you play as get systematically dismembered. But there is a reason for this. These gruesome animations are an incentive to never let this shit happen again, to play better. Ain't nobody gonna kill animation my ass! Pretty cool little way to work it into gameplay. I feel like a lot of people forget just how fucked up God of War is. For instance, let's take a look at this segment from the seminal God of War 3. Yeah, real seminal. So Kratos grabs this woman, oh yeah, he's gonna save her! I finally get to do something justified after killing 90% of the Earth for no good goddamn reason! Just gotta fight through this room, and then I gotta fight through this room, and then I gotta- Good lord, how long is this going to go on? Fuck, finally, now we just gotta get to the- Oh, oh, oh no, Kratos! <laughs> okay. Well, I guess he just needed a human gear the whole time. That scenario right there perfectly sums up the needless brutality of Kratos. Speaking of needless, God of War introduced us to the most innovative mechanic the world of video games has ever seen, the quick time event. Never has the mere press of a button been more powerful than when it's in the hands of Kratos. Normally in games, Square would be dedicated to something like, I don't know, light attack, reload, cry for your mama, but not in God of War. In God of War, Square will end a large motherfucker's life in an instant. This action took one button. In hindsight, it really does make sense though. Ending giant beasts with the press of a few buttons gives you a sense of the immense power that Kratos wields, that you wield. It's actually appropriate for these games, and dare I say, a good idea. Now everybody else, please stop doing them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, let's just have him gain some knowledge and he's got a fucking son that you upgrade. <laughs> So far, Doom has been my favorite game of the year, mostly because it's just one long kill animation. And it doesn't stop there, you don't just rip and tear demons, you kill animate that fucking story! On top of all that, this game doesn't even need the story, all it needs are these fucking fatalities and it fully understands that. And these glory kills, which is what they're called in the game, are integrated into the gameplay flawlessly. When you execute a glory kill, the demon you killed will spew forth health, letting you continue your ungodly rampage unscathed. Doom guy is literally nourished by their suffering. This is basically his breakfast cereal. The most important meal of the Day. Serving it up Doom Guy's way. Man, Rockstar knows how to stir up some controversy. The formula is actually really simple. All you gotta do is put a plastic bag over someone's head and then everyone loses their minds. I gotta be honest, I didn't play Manhunt when it dropped because I was too busy playing the SpongeBob movie game and being nine years old. All I remember about Manhunt is everybody losing their fucking marbles over it. But hey, we got Jack Thompson out of it, so he was fun to ridicule for a week or two. In preparation for this video, I sat down and watched every single kill from Manhunt and was instantly caught up in this hypnosis of sorts. Afterwards, I felt the need to wash myself or go volunteer at a soup kitchen, there needs to be some good in this world! Rockstar, much like Arcane Studios, shows a deep contempt for the human neck in Manhunt. You play as a male nurse whose wife cheated on him with a human neck, and he subsequently journeys through modern day Detroit to hunt and kill every last neck he can find. And just when you thought this shit couldn't get any cornier, environmental kills lets you end lives with toilet bowls, fire extinguisher, oh, I don't, let's not go there, manholes, iron maidens? This is the goddamn Looney Tunes! These kills are impressive and rank so highly for two reasons, really. They're real as which a Rockstar employee noted almost caused a mutiny at the company because everyone was so genuinely uncomfortable with it. Well then who the fuck wanted to make Manhunt? Was there just one executive in the back beaten off? Is it Pigsy? Does Pigsy run Rockstar? The second reason is because for 2003, this is some fucking next level animation. There are games coming out today that don't have kill animations that look this good. Looking at you, flaccid snake. <laughs> Shadow of Mordor is an awesome game filled with unique and discussion-worthy mechanics. But we're not here today to talk about meaningful things, we're here to talk about DECAPITATION! Most of the kill animations in Shadow of Mordor include the Uruks desperately trying to escape the fate that they've been handed, with Talion simply responding, nope, nope, not gonna happen, mm mm, no. He cleaves through these things like he's fucking slashing prices! I don't even know what that joke means! I don't care if Uruks are supposed to be pure evil or whatever, literally nobody deserves this! I'm honestly surprised one of these animations doesn't end with Talion getting knuckled deep and gaping one of these motherfuckers assholes. And holy shit, there are so many of these animations! 50 hours into this game and I was still seeing new ones. There had to be a whole team of people specifically formed to find every possible way to chop these poor knuckle-dragging motherfuckers into tiny little cubes! But apparently these 536 fucking animations were enough because halfway through the game the developers actually gift you 
you with a kill harder button. And that's what it's called in the game. You just look at the evidence right in front of your face. In the end, these beautiful, fluid, deeply disturbing kill animations are some of the main reasons I keep coming back to Shadow of Mordor. It's way past time for a sequel, by the way, guys. <laughs> No game series in the world has elicited more high-pitched squeals than Mortal Motherfucking Combat. I will never forget my first experience with the Coxsaw, and that's only the beginning of what seems to be a first-hand walkthrough of Ed Boon's deep-seated fear of chiropractors. Mortal Kombat X's fatalities are so fucking repulsive that I am actually afraid to see what the next one looks like. This shit was funny on the NES when you were turning people into babies and shit, but now it's just uncomfortable. Oh man, you ain't putting that dick back together. At this point, I feel like Mortal Kombat 11's only logical pre-order bonus would be bleach for your eyes. That being said, these kills are a fucking staple of the industry, and video games would not be the same without them. Never change Mortal Kombat, even though you changed like five times and it was all terrible. Except for Shaolin Monks. 